Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to extend a very warm welcome. You might say it's very cold in Cape Town. Uh, welcome. Luckily, the weather has aligned our wishes. <laughs> we also would like to extend our gratitude and thanks to all the other role players that have made it possible for this program to become a reality. Cape Town is quiet today. And it is because South Africa commemorates Women's Month in August as a tribute to more than 20,000 women who marched to union building in Pretoria, that is government buildings, in protest against the extension of pass laws in South Africa. The government has declared August Women's Month and 9th August is celebrated annually. So, 9th was yesterday on a Sunday, today is 10th, it's a public holiday. Let me make a few announcements. Most of you by now are aware of the ablution facilities. As you go out at this door, you turn to your left. We are attending to some of the Wi-Fi problems that people are experiencing. Uh, our technicians are on the board with regard to that. I might have invited you for coffee and tea, but you can't bring it inside. <laughs> not, not a problem now. Carry on with your tea and coffee. We also request that uh, you switch off your cell phones because they interfere with the system here. We hope that you will find the training both enjoyable and available. Thank you for coming. That many of you travel long distances serves to remind us that all just how important is this capacity building. I hope you will enjoy. Thank you very much. I'm now handing over to Raisa. Thank you, Albert. Uh, I will just say a few words uh, of welcome, first of all, on behalf also of the section. I think many of you know me. My name is Raisa Teodari. I am the chair of the section on parliamentary libraries and research services. And I'm very, very glad to be here. I'm very thankful to the Parliament of South Africa that made this training possible. We, have ha we are having training since 2009, I think. But at the beginning, we, were, we had the chance to have supports from external organizations. Then we did not anymore for various reasons. And uh, the generosity of the Parliament of South Africa, who welcomes us here, makes it possible this year, too, with so many participants. So this is a great thank to Albert and to the Parliament of South Africa. And I would like to thank Juanita, who is not here in the room now, but made everything possible, what's happening now and in the next days, because she worked so hard every day. This is the first set of thanks that I will thank you every day in this week. Um, I would like to thank Aplaza members to be here, because they're being here, and Aplaza for contributing to the uh, program, and I would especially like to thank the trainers, uh, Myra Fraser, who has been working on the content of the program at uh, first uh, in all its aspects, and Edmund Balneves, Ellie Valentine, who are down there, and Lilian Gassi, who's here on my right. Lilian is the secretary of the section, and uh, she will be uh, chairing the first session today. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for being here and your parliaments for allowing you to be here since today, because it will be a long week of work. Um, I uh, just an, another uh, practical aspect. Just remember that there is interpretation available. Also, thanks to the Parliament of South Africa. So, if any of you need French or Portuguese, 
please take the earphones and or whatever. I mean, whatever language is spoken, we have interpretation in English, French, and uh, Portuguese. Uh, so I think I will not take more time, uh, and I will. Uh, Ellie is. In, in channel one is English, channel two is French, channel two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will have two days of work, I'm sure, for the training, and then we will meet all the delegates the other delegates tomorrow to start the pre-conference and I'm really looking forward to that. I was here in 2007 and I'm so happy to be here again. Thank you. And let's start our work. I'm giving the floor to Lilian Gassi who is chairing the first session today. Thank you very much. Uh, the first session here is somewhat like a, an introduction to each other and I think Moira has communicated with you uh, about uh, sharing your information about your parliaments and about your challenges and other information and I will be calling on each of the country if you would come up here and uh, if you have provided slides they have been preloaded and uh, Moira is going to be t uh, changing the slides for you so um, I also ask that you keep your presentations uh, to about five minutes if possible so that we can uh, continue with the program. So that the first uh, up is um, from Botswana. If you would like to, do you want to come up here? <laughs> Oh, they can stand on the side. You can stand. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. You want to see me stand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can look at yeah. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Paul Lawani. I'm the librarian at the National Assembly of Botswana, the Botswana Parliament. Uh, Botswana is a, a, a small, relatively small country in the southern Africa. It's just some few miles from here. And it has a population of about 2,155,784 as at July 2014. That was the last uh, national census. And the government of Botswana it has a, it's a republic, a democratic republic, and it was previously Bichuanaland Protectorate, and we gained independence on the 30th, 30th of September 1966 from the, the Great Britain, from UK. The Parliament of Botswana was established in 1965, and after that was when we had our first elections, general elections. Then, as our parliament is a bicameral parliament consisting of one house, which is one chamber, which is the National Assembly, and then Radio Kosi, which is an advisory body. The National Assembly has 61 seats, 57 members of parliament directly elected by the popular vote, and the last elections were last year, and then four specially elected members of parliament. And our parliament is based upon the Westminster style. And we have 200 staff at the headquarters, and including all the temporary staff. And we have about 262 in, the, in different, the different constituencies, the 57 <coughs> constituencies that we have in the country. Oh, uh, in our parliament, each and every MP Member of Parliament has a PC, a tablet, and they get a monthly communications allowance for mobile, day, for, for mobile phones. And the smartphones are only given to the top management, which is the national speaker, up to all director levels. And at any discretion from the speaker, it can be given to one of the officers, depending on what they do their job is. Then all members of the parliament and all parliamentary staff, we have computers in our offices and we have internet and Wi-Fi connection in, in the parliament. The parliament of Botswana Library is not yet automated. And this, the main challenge here is with funds. 
as you may know that most of us African countries, we have this challenge of, 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 of lack of insufficient funds. And then we also have a website, which is www.parliament.gov.bw, and we have no internet at the moment. Uh, our library and research services, uh, in the library we have three library staff. I am the head of the library unit, and I hold a degree in library and information studies. I have two, I'm supervising two officers who have, who are principal library officers. They all hold diploma in library and information services. And the, the other one has been, is on list, on study leave, uh, doing his degree in library studies. And we all answer to reference questions from our MPs through the librarian, the head librarian. And our collection has about plus or minus 7,000 print collection. We currently subscribe to 12 local newspapers and four international uh, newspapers, mostly or all of them from South Africa. And we have seven magazines that we subscribe to. Uh, we also subscribe to the EBSCO host, which offers a number of electronic journals and books. We do this through the Botswana Library Consortium, which is an association whereby all institutions, inst member institutions, are able to, to subscribe to this through a subsidized uh, price. And at the moment, we don't have an institutional repository we, because of lack of funds or insufficient funds that we, we are experiencing. But we hope in the near future that we are here to learn from all of you to see how you manage to do all these things. And maybe the next time we meet, there will be a different story. Thank you very much. Who does not have a PowerPoint to come and talk? Kotowo. Kotowo. Okay, good. You got it? Oh, you got it? Oh. Well, we have somebody else. Yay! Okay, we got Egypt now. <laughs> okay. Good morning. This is Heba from uh, Egyptian Parliament. Uh, our delegation is uh, me, Mona, uh, Mona, and Heba. Mona is the head of our uh, library and uh, information sector. Uh, Egyptian House of Representatives. Um, this is uh, the map of Egypt. Egyptian population is. Okay. Uh, Egyptian uh, population is almost now about uh, 90 million or 91. Uh, before uh, 1952, Egypt was uh, under monarchy uh, regime. By that time, it became a republic, and now we are in the fourth republic. Uh, and here it is the map of Egypt. Um, House of Representatives is the official name of the Egyptian parliament now. Before its name was uh, People's Assembly, but uh, uh, after the new constitution in uh, 20, uh, uh, 
2014, it became uh, House of Representatives. Uh, House of Rep uh, the Egyptian Parliament was established in 1824, the first Egyptian Parliament in 1824. And uh, it was only one chamber. At uh, 1981, uh, according to the announcement of uh, President Sadat, it became two chambers. And after the new constitution last year, it, now it's only one chamber. Uh, it is officially announced that it is one chamber, but till now, it is not implemented practically because we are waiting for the new election by the end of this year. There are uh, about, according to the new constitution, about 470 MPs, uh, about 450 um, by election, and uh, 20 of them uh, chosen by the president, by the declaration of uh, Egyptian president. The type of Egyptian regime is presidential one. Uh, the, the parliamentary staff is about 3,100. According to how our parliament is digital, the current MPs don't have PCs for each MP, but uh, except for the heads of uh, the 19 committees that we have. Uh, no smart, uh, smartphone, but now we are trying to secure smartphone with mobile application and tablet for each new MP. There are about 500 PCs for the staff, for all the staff but there is no smartphone or tablet for them. According to, um, but for the library and research services computer system that we have used uh, document um, by uh, Bookmaster database, database and another separate one for minutes of plenary meetings. Our website is www.parliament.gov.eg and we have an intranet and electronic archive, but most of employees prefer to use paperwork. <laughs> it's a culture, it's our culture to use paper. <sighs> the information sector is the name of our library. The staff uh, of the library uh, are about uh, 80 and 45 of them answer reference requests for MPs. Year to date, our printed collection are about 81,000 titles. We have a subscription in 126 printed journals, newspapers, and periodics. The available services that we uh, offer are internet uh, services in multi uh, languages, research services, circulation, electronic press archive, current awareness service, information selective transmission. The digital library and research services, there are an access only for free electronic international reports and documents. There is an access with subscription for 27 electronic journals and newspapers. We have a special database for minutes of plenary meetings and subscription in two databases for codes, legislations, orders, and judgments uh, of course, and the High Supreme Court. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, next uh, the Free State Legislature of South Africa. Good morning, I'm Matilda Smith from the Free State and my colleague Dumasani Mlangeni is sitting there. Just to give you a bit of background, just remember I'm from South Africa and South Africa has nine provinces. We are, are one of the provincial libraries of South Africa. Um, South Africa has a population of 54.9 million people. That was according to the statistics of 2011. The free state only have 3 million. If I listen to the Egypt, who has 90 million people, then you know that the free state is very small. You can see that yellow, dark yellow province, that's where the free state is. That little red button, Bloemfontein, is where we reside. 
Our parliament was established in 1994 after the democratic elections, the year that Nelson Mandela became our president. We only have one chamber. We have 30 members in the chamber. Um, our parliament is based on a Westminster minister style. Of the elections, um, our MPs get elected. We publish a provincial list for, for the different parties in the province. We have the DA, the Freedom Front, the EFF, and the ANC, and those are our members. We only have 136 parliamentary staff to serve the 30 members. All our um, MPs have a PC, they have smartphones and tablets. Unfortunately, that doesn't go for all the staff members. Most of the staff have PCs, but our legislature does not supply smartphones and tablets. We are not very much electronic and computerized yet. Um, our website is www.fsl.gov.za. We only recently got an intranet system. When we get to our library and research services, here is the only librarian standing in front of you. So, it's quite difficult for one person to try and do everything. There, my colleague is sitting. There are seven researchers and they are in a separate section. Research and libraries doesn't work. We fall in one directorate, but we don't work closely together. Um, the print collection is only 1,567 books, and we subscribe to 10 newspapers, but it's all local newspapers that we subscribe to. We don't have any electronic books. Um, we only have one subscription to an electronic journal. And we don't have a repository. It's in the pipeline um, to get it up and running, but currently we don't have um, any repository. And that's the short and the long of the Free State Legislature. OK, our next presentation is from Kenya. Do we have someone yes, from Kenya? We have Esther. Esther, right. Esther. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mankone Andrew from Kenya Parliament. Sorry, I don't have a small ad copy. I will just go through what is here. Uh, yeah, I will use that one. Yeah, then you talk to them. Right. <laughs> uh, Kenya, as a country, we are about 44 million people and uh, since Kenya got independent from Britain, that's 1963, we had our first constitution in that 1963 which created two houses or two chambers, that is the Senate and the House of Representatives and the 1966 the House decided to march, and then they abolished the two houses. Then the main became one National Assembly, which then after 2010, when again the country decided to reintroduce the amendment of the Constitution, which we did in August 2010, then the reintroduction of the two houses again came into place. So currently Kenya has the two 
houses, the Senate with 69 uh, elected senators, the one speaker, makes 69. The National Assembly has 349, that's 348 elected, with one speaker, and the two are housed on one building, but different chambers, and sometimes they land houses currently. <clears throat> we have nominated uh, for the Senate and the National Senate, but both who present special interest, different special interest of the Kenyan people, disabilities, uh, the business, the illiterate people, and illiterate, uh, different so too much when they are presenting the views of the people of Kenya. Our parliament is based on the parliamentary system and we have about 1,000 staff who are serving both houses in National Assembly and added by a parliamentary service commission and the chair is the speaker of the National Assembly co-chaired by the Speaker of the Senate. And the Secretary becomes the clerk of the Senate and co-secretary is the clerk of the National Assembly. When it's not on the right, but that is uh, the motion. We, members of all, even PCs, in the eight houses, the plates are only for the Senators, about 200 PCs are for the staff, and the only senior staff who have the tablets. The liberal uses um, the co other liberal management system. We have the website, that is www.parliament.go.ke. We don't have the internet. Uh, we hope very soon we'll have it. The liberal has about eight librarians, staff in total, or with degrees, but added with a debut director who is the masters. So the rest down. Uh, can see Muira is looking where she is. She is somewhere, so I don't want to say where she is, but it's somewhere. And I, because you have looked at it, let me just pause and request the Kenyan delegation just to do this. Just to wave where they are, so that you, because I'm seeing some people trying to look where they are seated. So, <clears throat> so we do answer the questions, all of us equally, as it comes in. We don't have selectivity, that this goes to this one. So when the comes in such type, you have to do it. We have research, but we are not together. The research have their own department, even though we are in one directorate. So we don't run in one department, they have different departments, under one directorate. We have about uh, 5,000, 7,000 collections of library collections. We subscribe about uh, 10 printed journals, uh, local and international. We have about eight local daily papers and about foreign, five foreign papers which we do subscribe. We do not, don't subscribe on the internet, it's only on the online. We get to know, so one of the challenges, we have to know how some are doing it, then we run, we borrow from that way. We do some collections in parliament documents, that is under legislative, the parliament proposals, the committee reports, and some in media, which releases to person, we put them uh, under publication. Most of these are being printed in-house. That's why we are able to do that. Uh, I think that's what I have, and I thank you for listening for me.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Susu. I'm from Myanmar. My colleague is Mr. Aung Mye Jo. So he is a librarian of our parliament of Myanmar. So, and my Mrs. Maya, she is an international parliament specialist of the IBU. So we are together from Myanmar. Today, our president, I would like to present the Myanmar Lodo. Lodo means the parliament. About Myanmar, so the latter country is in mainland South Asia. One hundred and sixty thousand square miles or six hundred and seventy-seven thousand square kilometer. The population is more than fifty-one by three millions. Or uh, diverse uh, ethnic group living in Myanmar. The main eight groups and one hundred and thirty by ethnic living in Myanmar. The major language is Myanmar, and the religions are Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism. Uh, most of the, our people are Buddhism. Uh, our uh, border country is with China, Thailand, Bangladesh, Laos, and India. You can see the photo, and uh, the you can see the photo. That's Myanmar, and border country. Yeah, Myanmar is tall. Lotto means parliaments. Pidansun Lotto, so the means unions assemblies, is a pine camera of the Pidu Lotto, House of Representatives, and Amyodan Lotto, House of Nationalities. Our parliaments have two kinds of MB. So you can see the uh, elected person and selected person. Uh, selected person from the personnel nominated by the Commander in Chiefs of Defense Service. So 25% of MBs in, the, in our parliaments. Uh, in 2011, uh, numbers of MBs are 644. Uh, since of the, our MBs passed through away, nowadays, numbers of the, our MBs is uh, 632. 33. So general election in 7 November 2010, election law were promulgated in March 2010. On 31st January 2011, the new parliament was convened. It's the first time. Myanmar parliament is only four years old, so young. Uh, the photo is show Pidang Sun Lodo, uh, parliament of Myanmar. Libraries of parliaments, our department research and library department, and at the office of the union assemblies. As a IBU, UNDP, UGDS, uh, since 2011, they were supported to develop so our parliaments and our department. Our department has two sessions, research sessions and library sessions. Research sessions uh, make the research briefing for, for the MBs, for the staff, and computation inquiry for MBs, committees, and senior staff. As a, our library se session, Give information survey, digital doc, uh, documents, or uh, reference service. Our library has a three reading room survey with information counter near the plenary halls. Because uh, our, our library is uh, saturated in a separate building, so most of the, our MP cannot join the library, so we support to the reading room. So that's our reading room and me. <laughs> uh, about our organizations, seven research staff and 20 library staff in Pitang Sutlodo. Each Lodo has its own research department and library staff. Uh, we combine total in all three houses are 49 research staff and 30 library staff. We use the library management software, ELIF software, and Calibria software. Uh, we use California software to read for ebook. We have the beginnings of an internet, uh, internet survey to all users. We serve all users using any electronic device, such as that their smartphone. Total printed books are over once. What is that? Well, once. Sorry, <laughs> seventy thousand. Sorry, so seventy thousand. Eleven newspaper subscriptions. Uh, Twenty one subscription to weekly journal. 40 subscription to periodic and 29 media for SMS City. 
Now we are working on the repository library. We have planned to teach the material. So because uh, uh, we want to give Nestor survey information to the user, that's why we need to change the digital library. That's all. Thank you. We have Thailand next. <coughs> From Thailand? Yes. Good morning, all the participants. I'm Oranit Rungtipa Nun. On behalf of my director and all of my colleagues here, I'm going to give you a brief presentation about Thailand, our legislative body, and also our services. Okay. This is the map of Thailand. Thailand is one, uh, is one of 10 ASEAN members. It's in Southeast Asia. <coughs> uh, in the past, our country was under the absolute monarchy. After the revolution in 1932, we became under uh, the um, constitutional monarchy with a prime minister uh, as the head of government. <coughs> Our pop uh, we, uh, the country has the population of roughly about 67 million. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, I have to say that because now we are in the spatial situation, political situation, so uh, the parliament that we have now is the National, Legislat uh, National Legislative Assembly, is the unicameral. But in the past, before the coup in 2014, our parliament uh, consisted of two houses, two chambers, the House of Representatives and the House of Senate. Which, ba uh, which was based on uh, Westminster Star. So now we have only one chamber. All the secretariat units, the, secre the secretariat of the House of Representatives and the secretariat of the House of Senate now work, work as the supporting units for the, the National Legislati uh, Legislative Assembly. So, so all the members, all the NLA members were appointed by the king on the advice of the, uh, the, the CPO, I mean the, the, the Council for Peace and Order. Okay. Uh, the next slide, please. So I, I will focus on the, the secretariat of the House of Representatives, the, the place that I'm from. We provide our, uh, tablet computers for our NRA members, and also now we have uh, we are responsible for supporting the the Constitution Drafting Committee and the National Council Reform. So we pro we offer the tablets to our all the members. And we and our executives are provided smartphones and tablet computers. And in this year plan, our officer, all the officers, we have one PC. In the computer system that we use in the library and academic services, we use library automation system and legislative institutional repository system. So this is the website, and this is our library website. We have e-library and also digital library. And each, each secretariat unit has, uh, has its own intranet. Okay. Uh, in the secretariat of the House of Representatives, the Bureau of Economic Services, um, 
provide library services and also the research services. We have about 130 officers to provide services to the members. We have 39 parliamentary officers who work as subject specialists. We have 10 legal officers and also 21 librarians. The, the parliamentary officers and legal officers uh, give a quick research to the members. Okay. So, and, and you may see the, another one, the Bureau of Parliamentary Studies. This, this bureau belongs to the Secretariat of the House of Senate, which works similar as, as we do. Yes. So the next one, please. Now we don't have, uh, we don't have the access to electronic books, and we, we, we haven't uh, subscribe to the in, any electronic journal or newspapers, but now we take a, a a free trial of Cambridge. So if it's good enough, so we will we will subscribe, and now we have a digital collection such as legislative and budgetary proposals, minutes of planetary and committee meetings. And we also create a digital collection of digitized uh, documents, but available only uh, for in-house users. About the challenge, we don't have any challenge about uh, the technology or uh, any uh, IT materials. But our challenge is about language, especially English skills. And because we are moving forward to ASEAN, so we need uh, English. And also, we need to know more about ASEAN. So our laws can uh, can be compatible with uh, ASEAN agreements. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation is from Uganda. Good morning, colleagues. Let me ask the delegation from Uganda, the high power delegation, to wave. <laughs> and associated member, Iara. <laughs> oh, yes. My name is Innocent Rugamba, Director of Library Services, Parliament of Uganda. Um, the population of Uganda is estimated currently at 38 million. We obtained independence from the British rule in 1962. And we are located in East Africa. The parliament has its history dating back as 1921, but when there was no African representation. So the correct parliament I'm talking about the Independence Parliament, 1962. It's still unicameral chamber. And right now we are running the ninth parliament, which is winding up early next year. We are preparing for elections. The ninth parliament is comprised of 238 constituency representatives by universal suffrage, 112 district women MPs, this is again through affirmative action. We are represented also by 10 Uganda military, Uganda People's Defense Forces. We have five representatives from the youth, and the country is divided into five regions, so we have five youth members of parliament, five representatives of persons with disabilities, and five representatives of workers, then 13 ex-official members, totaling up to 388. And the next parliament is likely to be around 430 there, if all goes well. Let's move on. 
Uh, my eyes are a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Please, can you proceed? It just makes it easier to enjoy. Uh, okay. <laughs> my dear, let's proceed. Article 78. Our parliament consists of members directly elected to represent the constituencies, as I had deeply put. One woman representative for every district, and we are having 112 districts as of today, but the numbers are likely to increase in the next parliament. And we are running according to the Westminster model. Can proceed. How digital is our parliament? Every member of parliament is provided with a PC in his, his or her office, and the parliament has also made an extra effort to equip every MP with an iPad. And it's the duty of the library to upload documents on iPads for the members. So we no longer print out documents for members of parliament. <coughs> members buy for themselves the smartphones, and so is staff. Staff also buy for themselves smartphones. All staff have access to the individual personal computer. As for the computer system being used in the library, we use integrated library software called Koha. We also use this space and commonly now Alfresco document management system by which we upload members uh, documents on members' iPads. Our website reads thus and uh, so is the internet. Library staffing so far, we have a staff of 16 members, and then the Department of Research is equipped with 39 such staff. And as far as reference questions are concerned in the library, all staff do respond to, because members pick a phone and they call at wish. If they call, they head of the library, I answer the questions. If they call, they are, so we all respond to the reference questions. Although we have a dedicated reference list. The size of print currently what is captured on our integrated library system is 15,695. But the other documents that are still being processed. As for journals and magazines, uh, standard is 547. Uh, no titles, so to say, but uh, of our collection. Printed general newspaper subscriptions currently stands at 25. Titles. Titles. Yeah. For electronic books, uh, this is a future prospect. Subscriptions to electronic journals. Stands at 26 titles. We are in infant stage trying to digitize our collection. This covers the committee reports, the laws of the country, parliamentary proceedings, and so on and so forth. That's more. There was a mention about the challenge. The challenge that we have is basically providing digital information services with limited resources. And more specific, we've scanned lots of documents and uploaded them on our Fresco document management system. But it's not easy to create metadata for documents that have been saved in PDF. So we, we need guidance on that. For God and our country, Uganda. <laughs> okay, our next presentation is from Zambia.
Good morning, everybody. Did we all have tea? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. At least that sounds better. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Agi. Unfortunately, I'm not Miss Chamamfula as presented there, but she asked me to present on her behalf. That's my boss. I'm sure you, most of you know her. She's right there. You can just wave. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my other colleague is uh, Leslie Chikuta from Zambia. Those of you who were with us uh, during our place last year, um, we are happy to see you all. Thank you. Well, a brief uh, presentation about Zambia. Uh, Zambia was formerly called Northern Rhodesia. Um, the region was once ruled by the British South African Company, which Rhodes established until 1924 when the British government took over the administration. From 1953 to 1964, Northern Rhodesia was federated um, with Southern Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. Is Zimbabwe here? No. Okay. And Nyasaland, now Malawi, in the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. On 24th October 1964, Northern Rhodesia became the independent nation of Zambia. So that's our new name. Thank you. Okay. And last year, we celebrated our Golden Jubilee. Yeah. That's our small map there. Uh, Zambia is relatively a small country with only about 14, um, 14 million people, 14, almost 14,700. 14, exactly. That, was, that is as of December uh, 2014. Uh, the first parliament, well, it, it, it's, it's got a long history from 1924 and um, until 1964 when uh, Kenneth Kaunda became our president. So the, the, cabin, the, the, the cabinet office, which is now cabinet office, was once used as our parliament buildings. But in 1967, that's when we started using the current building. Those of you who have visited Zambia, we are now in our current building. This was established in 1967. Okay. Um, our parliament has one chamber. It's a unicameral. Okay. Uh, we have 150 elected members of parliament, eight nominated, plus the honorable Mr. Speaker, the total is 159. So the 150 elected members come from our 150 constituencies. The eight are nominated by the president. The president has the powers to nominate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, okay, uh, we have tripartite elections which are conducted every five years. That is um, the local government elections, the presidential elections, and the uh, parliamentary elections as well. So our MPs are elected uh, by the majority. Our parliament embraces a hybrid style with attributes from both the presidential and Westminster styles of parliament. The total number of parliamentary staff at the moment is about 586. Um, however, we also have constituents offices so that 586 only represents the number of uh, members of staff at the parliament buildings. However, in the, nine, in the 159, um, 150 constituencies, we also have uh, members of staff there. There's always a PA, that's a public um, um, uh, a personal assistant, and an administrative assistant to the members of parliament. Okay. Well, how digital is our parliament? We are getting there. In the past, we would not talk about digital things anyway. But now, each member of parliament owns a computer uh, in their respective constituencies. And um, plans are underway to acquire tablets for members of parliament. Though, right now, they do own personal tablets, personal smartphones, and iPads, name them. Um, some of the members of 
uh, staff, members of staff on their personal uh, uh, digital uh, uh, gadgets, but they also have a PC. We all have PCs, uh, workstations in our offices. At least that makes our work easier. Um, as for the library, we are currently conducting a pilot project. We want to move from our old system, oh, I mean the current system that we are using, which is in Magic. Um, we want to move to Koha and Dispers. So we are here actually to learn more about those of you who are using Koha and Dispers will have to learn more about how it works. I think we'll be glad to learn. Mm, the in Magic information system, okay, that's a picture of it. That's what we are currently using. So it uh, performs a number of functions. I hope you are able to see. I think I'll, I'll use this one. Um, it, helps, it, it helps us to um, create databases for most of our documents. For example, if you're able to see there, there's acts, newspapers, committee reports. So we have all those um, databases for various documents of our parliament. Um, then the entire catalog has about 21,527 documents. Um, however, that's just for the main book catalog. So we also have various journals, committee reports. We didn't get the actual numbers. But this is what in Magic does, basically. You're able to see the active loans. You're able to see the overdue loans. So it helps you to keep track of the statistics. Thank you. We do have a website and an intranet. That's an example of our website there. It's at www.parliament.gov.zm. And that's, um, I think, just an example. That's our speaker, our current speaker, Dr. Matibini, Honorable Justice Dr. Matibini. OK. Um, our library is called the Parliamentary Information and Research Library. Though we do have a research department separate from our library, and we do separate things. Um, though we work in, in, in conjunction, we do work together. So for the library alone, we have 10 members of staff. That is um, about seven females, and then we have three males. And Ms. Simfula is our chief librarian. Okay. Uh, in terms of reference questions, all the library staff are qualified to handle this because uh, at least ev almost everyone has a, a first degree. So we are able to uh, answer any reference questions that are coming from members of parliament as well as other researchers. Um, just for your information, our, uh, in our research library, we give priority to the MPs. However, other people would want to use the library, they can come through, but they have to make a request which comes through the chief librarian and the clerk as well. Um, I've already talked about the book collection. You can skip that. We subscribe to our three main local newspapers. That is uh, the print media. And then we also, have, we also subscribe to both local and international uh, issues on current affairs, such as magazines. I'm sure you can see some of them there. Yes, yeah, fine. Um, plans are underway to buy electronic books for the library. So we haven't yet, um, we don't have, have e-books yet, but we'll soon have. Um, we do subscribe to journals, uh, and this is, um, the journals are accessed through a link on our website. We have um, a consortium, which is called the Zambia Library Consortium. So it helps us to get the e electronic journals at a subsidized rate. Mm, well, the major publishers, they're quite, they're, they're quite a lot. We have just uh, there, the World Bank, Cambridge University Press, so there are a number of them. Um, we've already started digitizing, and um, just for information, uh, our parliament didn't have digital information up to 19, uh, 1996. We didn't have any soft copies. Whatever we had was just print, so we have a lot of paper in our library. Those who visited, I'm sure you could tell, we have a lot, a lot of people. So now we've started digitizing, and we've gone as far back as 1924. So we are digitizing basically the parliamentary documents. 
So the bills, the acts, the parliamentary debates, that's what we are concentrating on. So we do have a collection and it's going on well. Though the machine that we are currently using is quite um, manual, if I may put it that way, it's auto and manual. So we hope to get a machine that can help us do the work easily and faster. So that's just an example of a document being digitized. Thank you very much and thank you for your attention. So that's that's so all we have for PowerPoint. So um, now we have others uh, who will be presenting. Do you want them out here? Or? Yeah. The, yeah. All right. Um, Cote d'Ivoire is, do you, is, oh, let me here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will speak in French <laughs> because I come from a, in in French uh, country. Okay. Channel, okay. Channel one for okay. Are you speaking in English or French? Oh, French. On French. 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 Okay. okay. Bonjour à tous. Bonjour, chers collègues. Je suis. Bonjour chers collègues, je suis Adama Kone de la Côte d'Ivoire, je suis le chef du service de la documentation et des archives. Voilà. J'ai plein de, plein de collègues de, de l'Afrique de l'Ouest qui avaient souhaité être parmi nous aujourd'hui pour qu'ensemble nous venions partager avec vous l'expérience de certains pays francophones, par exemple le Burkina Faso, et le Madagascar, le Togo, mais malheureusement il, certains ne pourront pas être parmi nous. Bon, D'autres seront là dès, dès demain pour, pour, pour la pré-conférence. Euh, si cela, je vais commencer. La Côte d'Ivoire est un pays de l'Afrique de l'Ouest qui est situé, en, et, et, qui fait frontière à l'est avec le Ghana, à l'ouest avec euh, la Guinée et le Libéria, au nord avec le Mali et le Burkina Faso, et au sud avec l'océan Atlantique. C'est un pays qui a et, une république de type présidentiel. La Côte d'Ivoire a été indépendante en 1960, après avoir été colonisée par la France. Et l'Assemblée nationale de Côte d'Ivoire, telle que nous la connaissons actuellement, et, et date de 1960, année au cours de laquelle la Côte d'Ivoire a été colonisée. L'indépendance de la Côte d'Ivoire est survenue le 7 août 1960. Mais l'histoire parlementaire du pays remonte à 1946, où... A l'origine, le Parlement de la Côte d'Ivoire était composé par des Ivoiriens, mais aussi par des Français. Mais à partir de 1960, après l'indépendance, il est revenu aux Ivoiriens eux-mêmes d'animer la vie parlementaire dans le pays. Et c est, c est, nous n'avons qu'une seule chambre en Côte d'Ivoire, qui est constituée par l'Assemblée nationale. Et depuis les dernières élections qui ont été faites en 2011, après les élections politiques que nous avons connues chez nous, 
Et nous avons maintenant 255 députés qui sont tous élus au suffrage direct universel pour une durée de 5 ans. Et donc euh, l'élection des députés devrait avoir lieu en 2016, mais étant donné qu'au cours du mois d'octobre prochain, nous aurons les élections présidentielles en Côte d'Ivoire, il y a actuellement des discussions pour pouvoir raccourcir le mandat des parlementaires pour coupler un peu les élections pour amoindrir les coûts. Donc, comme je l'ai dit tantôt, en Côte d'Ivoire, notre contexte est marqué par, par, par la sortie de crise, par la normalisation. Et dans ce contexte, il faut dire qu'au cours de la crise de 2010, qui a été une crise très très profonde, et les institutions ont, ont connu de, de, de sérieux problèmes. Le Parlement a même été pillé, la bibliothèque parlementaire a été pillée, les archives, nous étions en plein projet de numérisation des archives, et puis voilà, nos scanners, par exemple, ont été emportés. Mais heureusement pour nous, nous avons pu conserver l'essentiel de nos documents papier. Donc dans ce contexte, nous avons eu recours et à, à beaucoup de partenaires qui nous appuient pour, 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 pour nous aider dans tout ce que nous faisons. Et parmi ces parlementaires, nous avons l'Assemblée parlementaire de la francophonie et l'Union interparlementaire. Et nous avons aussi l'USAID qui nous aide énormément à normaliser la vie parlementaire en Côte d'Ivoire. next slide. Okay. Donc, en début de législature, un fonds d'installation est alloué chez nous à chaque député. Il s'agit de 10 millions de francs CFA. 10 millions de francs CFA, ça fait environ 20 000 dollars qui est donné gratuitement à chaque parlementaire qui est élu pour lui permettre de se prendre en charge. Et dans ce fonds, c'est à lui d'acheter tous les équipements dont il a besoin pour travailler. Et après, nous nous sommes rendus compte que certains parlementaires n'ont pas utilisé ce fonds-là, par exemple, pour s'équiper en équipement de travail, en achetant, par exemple, un ordinateur portable. <rire> ou voilà. Certains ont carrément pris ça pour acheter des, des, des mobiliers de maison, des télévisions, en tout cas pour changer de vie, et ils n'ont pas fait. Et après, voilà. Lorsque nous avons commencé la discussion avec l'USAID pour nous aider à... à, à à soutenir le développement de l'activité parlementaire. Et donc, il est apparu nécessaire de leur octroyer au moins des téléphones intelligents, des smartphones. Donc, dans le cadre de ce partenariat, l'USAID a offert en 2013 eh, à tous les députés, mais aussi eh, au cadre de l'administration parlementaire, des smartphones BlackBerry qui étaient connectés. Et malheureusement, après quelques constats, il y a quelques mois, nous nous sommes rendus compte que la plupart des téléphones ne sont pas utilisés comme il fallait. Il y a des députés qui disent que l'USAID, peut-être, en nous donnant ce téléphone, veut nous surveiller, veut savoir ce qui se passe. Donc, voilà, il y en a qui n'utilisent pas. Donc, faut, pour dire qu'aujourd'hui, chez nous, et, au niveau de, du Parlement, le soutien à la, à, à la numérisation ou bien et, à la prise en charge de, de, des outils numériques par les parlementaires n'est pas encore et bien, bien pensé par le Parlement, puisqu'on avait donné de l'argent aux députés et on leur a laissé la latitude eux-mêmes de pouvoir le faire. Et aujourd'hui, nous sommes en train d'envisager, de, 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 au lieu de leur donner de l'argent, au moment de l'installation, il va falloir que l'Assemblée même leur donne des téléphones portables et des tablettes et puis une connexion Internet qui sera gérée au, au, au niveau du Parlement lui-même. Parce que même si on leur donne des, de l'argent pour pouvoir acheter la connexion Internet, ils ne sont pas sûrs qu'ils veulent le faire. Parce qu'il y en a qui, qui ont encore peur de ces outils. En général, les jeunes députés voilà, sont plus une tâche, comme on le dit. Voilà. Et, et, ils ont au moins deux, trois téléphones, ils ont des tablettes, ils sont sur Facebook, Twitter, mais il y en a par contre qui s'en méfient. Qui s'en méfie. Et le site web de notre Assemblée nationale, c'est www.asnat.ci. Et aujourd'hui, nous sommes en cours de déploiement de l'intranet avec l'appui du programme Noria de l'Assemblée parlementaire de la francophonie. Et au niveau de la bibliothèque, nous n'avons actuellement que deux agents. Nous n'avons que deux agents. Mais bon. Dans le programme de développement des activités de la bibliothèque, il est prévu le recrutement de quelques agents dès le début de l'année prochaine. Et la bibliothèque, comme je l'ai dit, en cours de développement, nous envisageons de l'informatiser avec un logiciel libre. Actuellement, nous sommes en train de faire une étude entre COA et PMB pour vendre les deux, voilà, lequel pourrait nous servir à informatiser notre bibliothèque. Et, et, récemment, nous avons fait... Et, un inventaire qui a révélé que le fonds comporte environ 10 000 documents reliés. Les documents, les, 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 
les livres et autres. Voilà. Mais depuis après la crise, nous ne recevons que deux journaux nationaux. Voilà. Et ça, c'est pas normal. Pour un pays qui comporte près de 60 titres, donc, il y a des députés qui se plaignent parce qu'ils ne trouvent pas des journaux, des tendances politiques et qui sont proches d'eux. Donc tout ça, ça fait partie des insuffisances que nous devrons corriger. Voilà. Et puis nous avons, au niveau de la bibliothèque, nous-mêmes constitué une petite base de données comprenant la plupart des, des, des publications, des des rapports et des revues des organisations interparlementaires telles que l'Union interparlementaire UIP, l'Assemblée parlementaire de la francophonie, mais aussi les parlements africains et le parlement de la CDAO et, et puis euh, comment on appelle ça, le parlement panafricain. Voilà, nous avons des références de ces choses. Et au niveau des archives, nous avons relancé la numérisation des archives historiques et des archives législatives en vue de constituer une base de données qui nous permettrait de réaliser cela. Et puis au niveau de l'Assemblée nationale, la, la recherche est confiée à un autre service qu'on appelle chez nous le service des études et, et, et de l'assistance parlementaire. C'est un service qui, bon, dans la pratique, ne fonctionne pas encore bien avec la bibliothèque. Et au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire, toujours avec l'appui de l'USA, nous devions faire et avoir un séminaire de formation sur la recherche législative qui devrait commencer dès demain, donc du 11 au 14. Bon, C'est moi-même qui pilotais et puis bon. J'ai réfléchi, j'ai vu qu'ici aussi la formation qui est là est tellement intéressante. Donc, oh, je suis venu ici, mais j'ai mes collègues qui sont là-bas. Voilà, ils nous ont fait venir un expert avec qui nous avons discuté, qui a fait un état des lieux et qui va nous aider à implémenter un bon service de, de, de recherche au sein de notre Parlement. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Good morning, colleagues. I am Rina Takrus, the chief librarian of the Namibian Parliament. And together with me, I have brought along five men. <laughs> Honestly blessed, isn't it? So um, this time around, I'm so proud to have all my managers together with me. We are free librarians within our library. And then we have Dr. John Shimaneni, is the director for library and computer services. And then we have Mr. Sinalumpu, which is the director for uh, research and information services. Then together we have uh, another librarian, which is Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey? And then we have Michael, our information officer, and then Yes, we have Emmanuel, also an information and research officer. The Namibian parliament is, is, is bicameral. And about our country, um, the population is 2.2 million within a, within a vast land. And then we are now 25 years independent. We got our independence from South Africa some 25 years ago. So the way you should understand us also is that we are just a smaller version of South Africa. So if you want to learn Namibia more, start here within <laughs> South Africa. So our parliament by Kamaral, so meaning we have the National Council and the National Assembly. Within the National Council, we have 104 members. We just ended our sixth parliament and we are serving them now. And then with the council, we have 26 members. All our... Um, Members of parliament are fully equipped, meaning that we are providing them with smartphones, iPads, and altogether we have less than about 200 staff members within the whole parliament, and all staff members are fully equipped with um, PCs. Namibia is more a desert country, and then when it comes to digital, we are really advanced in that digital, we have an e-parliament, meaning also that within the library we are using the well-known InMagic database. And um, the only challenge that we have within the library is that we don't have enough um, e-resources, especially journals and stuff. But we have a good budget that we are planning now to acquire more of the electronic resources. Um, 
We have also a good running website which is constantly being upgraded right now. And when it comes to also to our bills and acts, all of them are electronic, that we are back scanning and the back scanning process has not yet been completed, it's ongoing. Um, the main challenge that we have also in our parliament is the MPs, the full usage of members of parliament for the resources that we have. So meaning that in one word, we don't really have a good reading culture in Namibia and especially when it comes to MPs, we are providing them much more electronically that, but they are still trusting to have their printed copy. But all in all, we just need to push up in bringing more MPs into the reading culture and electronic reading usage. Yes, they have the uh, um, facilities, but when it comes to reading, it's still a thing of spin footing them. But when it comes to staff members, the usage of library and other resources are very, very well. Our staff members are also constantly studying and upgrading their knowledges. And um, our library is well used by the public, especially researchers and students. So MPs are not using it as much. Rather, the MPs would um, send their drivers to come and collect material for them or we will email it for them. So we really need to bring, um, to bring him, them in more. And another main challenge that we also have as a parliament is that to narrow the digital gap within those that have and have not. In general, we are fully equipped, but we need to do more so that all people and at l the whole population at large can be a digital nation. And that's it. Thank you so much. So we have a presentation from Seychelles. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Tanya, and uh, my presentation is about the National Assembly of Seychelles. Um, Seychelles is um, a group of islands in the Indian Ocean, as you can see from the map. Um, it's uh, close to Africa. Um, actually, it's a very, you can't even see it on the, on the map, on the world map, but it's a small dot there in the Indian Ocean. <laughs> yes. Um, our population is around 91,000 people, and uh, we gained our independence from Britain in 1976. And after that, we had the First Republic, which was uh, only 11 months, the Second Republic from 1979 to 1992. And uh, since 1993, we, had the, we have the, uh, the Third Republic, and uh, we are now um, in the fifth assembly of the Third Republic of the National Assembly of Seychelles. Um, next one. Oh, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, like I said, the National Assembly was established in uh, 1993, and we are 23 years now in existence, and we're in the Fifth Assembly, like I said, and we are a unicameral parliament, that means we have only one house, we've always had one house. We've got only 32 members of parliament, 25 of them are directly elected because we have 25 districts, and eight are proportionally elected, but we, we can have 10 proportionally elected. Every 10% of votes, we can have a proportionally me uh, elected member. Our parliament is based on a presidential system, but we still have some uh, practices of the Westminster system. For example, question time, where the minister comes and uh, answer questions of members. We have 37 parliamentary staff, very, very small parliament. Um, all our members, uh, they have smartphones and iPads, and uh, they all can also come to the National Assembly and access the computers and printers in the members' uh, room at Parliament. And our staff also, they have uh, personal computers, and management staff have tablets, laptops, smartphones. Um, but we're not digitized yet. At the moment, the, the only database we use for the library is the WinISIS, and it's got all its issues. 
Um, we have a, a website, www.nationalassembly.sc uh, website. And we also have an intranet where we share information internally, but it's well, mostly for uh, committee folders and so on. Um, next one. Uh, our library has, uh, actually the library and research services are integrated and we have only two members of staff, myself and a documentation assistant. And uh, we, and, and it's only me that receive um, reference requests for members and I have to, uh, we have only 32 members. And what's uh, interesting about our parliament is that members, they have iPads and they like doing their own research most of the time. Um, but uh, for other information, sometimes they will come to the library for specific information that they, they require. For example, they want to liaise with uh, the executive and so on for information, then they come to the library and I assist them. Um, we have uh, print collections, um, we have uh, four printed journals, subscriptions, five newspapers, and they are mostly local newspapers. Next. Um, uh, we have subscription to three electronic newspapers, three um, electronic journals. Um, we have a digital collection of parliamentary documents like uh, legislative, uh, um, like other papers and so on, budgetary proposals. We have minutes of plenary, have uh, minutes of committee meetings and business of committee meetings. But in general, our library documents are not digitized yet. And this is the reason why I, attend, I am attending this training, to, to get the experience to go back and, and start digitizing our library collections. And this is one of our main challenges because similar to other countries in the region, our problem is getting MPs to start reading. And since we are giving them iPads and smartphones and so on, so we need to start digitizing our documents so they can access it at least on, the, on those uh, electronic devices, even if they don't want to come to the library to, 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 to do the, uh, the research or to get information. So this is basically my presentation. Thank you. So, um, do we have a presentation from Angola? Do we have? Was it? Oh yeah, I mean to come and speak over here. <laughs> uh, oh, do you want to come up? Uh, maybe you could come up here. Uh, here. This is no, we didn't submit any presentation to no, you. No, but you can speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Portuguese. Portuguese. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, the, um, he will be uh, talking in Portuguese, so you have to use your translation sets. Muito bom dia, caros colegas. Eu sou Geraldo Cambiete, sou diretor de documentação e informação da Assembleia Nacional. Uh, em poucas palavras posso dizer que nós temos, portanto, o nosso parlamento é, chama-se Assembleia Nacional de Angola, E o nosso parlamento é composto por 200, é, é um parlamento monocamaral e composto por 220 deputados. 220 deputados eleitos por círculos eleitorais provinciais e pelo círculo eleitoral nacional. Na prática é como se nós tivéssemos uma câmara alta e uma câmara baixa, mas tudo funciona numa só câmara. Uh, <coughs> um, portanto, uh, acho que relativamente ao Parlamento, uh, nós temos também realizado 
É, temos uma história muito trágica de guerra. Uh, não sei se alguém já leu aqui um livro da senhora Margaret Ast, que dizia que Angola, órfã da Guerra Fria, tanto devido aos muitos potenciais recursos naturais que nós temos, é, as grandes potências disputaram praticamente o nosso país e tivemos 40, muito, muitos anos de guerra. Felizmente, em 2002, conseguimos alcançar a paz definitivamente. E de então para cá, temos, portanto, temos vindo a realizar eleições regulares. Já realizamos três eleições. Na base do sistema eleitoral proporcional. Um, tanto vindo diretamente para o assunto que nos traz. Bom, nós, um, a nossa grande aposta neste momento é que estamos a modernizar, portanto, os serviços de documentação e informação. Uh, estamos a trabalhar na digitalização, sobretudo, do arquivos, dos arquivos, arquivo histórico parlamentar, está a ser completamente digitalizado. Um, também temos em carteira um projeto de modernidade, tanto de reapetrechamento da biblioteca com novas monografias. E, portanto, está a ser instalado um sistema digital de gestão, de gestão bibliográfica. Portanto, é, também temos toda a nossa legislação é, digitalizada. Portanto, no passado nós tínhamos um processo muito enfadonho de, digamos, um processo estressante em termos de pesquisa de legislação, mas neste momento temos toda a legislação digitalizada e com apenas um clique nós o próprio deputado, com um clique, pode ir obter a informação que precisa. Bom, aqueles que não estão, é, digamos, muito é, sensíveis aos problemas informáticos, trabalham com as secretárias. É, portanto, temos um website que é www.parlamento.com é, ao um website que precisa de ser melhorado em muitos aspectos, mas tem a informação básica que todas as pessoas precisam. Também em termos de temos, eh, fornecemos aos deputados eh, todas as mais importantes publicações eh, que há no país, jornais. Portanto, nós fornecemos vários jornais aos, aos senhores deputados. É, eu creio que são estas, assim muito, é, digamos, telegraficamente, os aspectos que havia para dizer. Se calhar numa outra oportunidade teremos mais informações. Obrigado. Thank you very much. So, do we have um, participants from Ghana? Is, are they here? Or uh, are there en any other participants who would like to do a, a, a talk about your parliamentary library and your parliament that we missed? Yes, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. Then we don't have Somalia.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Charlotte Shomohang. I'm from East African Legislative Assembly. It's not a country, but uh, it's a regional parliament. Um, uh, East African Community is uh, an intergovernmental organization comprising of five countries. It was originally three countries, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. But in 2007, uh, we incorporated other two countries, Rwanda and Burundi. So there are now five countries. We are based in Arusha, Arusha, Tanzania. And uh, our parliament is comprised of 47, 45 members, nine from each country. And we have seven ex-official members. Those are the ministers responsible for the East African Community Affairs. Uh, IALA, we are, IALA as a whole, we are about um, 35 members of staff. And uh, in the library, it's particularly only one staff member. As far as uh, members are concerned, they are provided with a laptop, each one of them, because they don't sit in Arusha all the time. At least they have to sit in each of the countries once and sit in Arusha. Uh, at least once in Arusha, then we all we, we move to other parts of the of those countries. So they are provided with laptop, and they, we are planning to give them iPads because they are complaining that laptops are kind of heavy. So there are plans to provide them with iPads. Um, East African community comprised mainly three organs, which is the assembly, the court, and the secretariat. And as each one of those has got a library, and we uh, we network as librarians. So the main the main um, project we are carrying on now is the digital is the we are setting up an institutional repository. We are actually in the process of uploading the resources on the this space. That is what is on ongoing. And uh, I think by September probably would have finished and it will be available to the public. We also have a um, reports database uh, which which comprised all the policy reports that are done at the at the Secretariat uh, in Arusha. Um, uh, the main challenge we are facing right now, especially as far as the repository is concerned, is um, the creation of metadata to those uh, documents that we are uploading. It is really becoming a problem, and uh, we are looking forward to seeing how we can maybe solve them in this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. So did we miss anyone else? <laughs> no? Okay, then this concludes session one of uh, our day one of training. And yes, yeah, so we have a, a coffee break next. And because we started late, I would ask that we keep our coffee break to about 15 minutes and that we come back here at um, about 11.35 so that we can start our next session. Thank you. Start, so I hope this will encourage the others to come in. Um, well, first of all, thank you for the presentations and uh, of your parliaments and libraries. It was very interesting, I think. Uh, we will, if you all agree, we would uh, post them on the section website. Uh, so I also encourage those who did not do a presentation using uh, the template that Mora has sent uh, to ask Mora how to get the template and maybe 
prepare the presentation with what you have told us so we can add that to the group of presentations that will be posted on the website of the section if you agree because I think it's very interesting information for everyone. So besides this, uh, again thank you and I would like to give the floor now to Maura Fraser for the second session of today on strategic planning in parliamentary libraries and research services. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, need to, I need to hear the voices because uh, um, this session we are planning to be interactive and we have heard such really interesting information from all of you. So I am sure that when you listen to those presentations, you found some other parliament that is, has some characteristics that are really similar to your own. So I know many of you in the room, but not everybody. So uh, my background, I worked for 12 years as a parliamentary librarian and group manager information and knowledge in the New Zealand Parliament. And then in the last four years, I've been working with developing parliaments. So I am mostly, I've been in, uh, in the Parliament of Myanmar for two and a half years, but I've also done some work in other parliaments, often uh, mostly in Asia now. So, uh, but I was very, very interested to hear all your presentations. Before I get into my topic, which is planning for the development of parliamentary library research and information services. So what I do now is um, help with assessments of particularly parliamentary library and research services. So recommendations and plans for how to develop uh, parliamentary library research and, and information services in developing parliaments. And in the Parliament of Myanmar, I am actually working in the development program. So I'm, I'm there uh, for a much uh, longer term, working in, the, in support of the Parliament of Myanmar. Um, before I begin to talk about the theory of planning, and then in our second session after lunch, you will, you will actually have some discussions. I want to make one comment that really struck me listening to the presentations this morning. So when you are doing planning for library and research and information services, you are planning for services to the parliament. And it's really important to think about the parliament and the people that you are serving. Many of you talked about MPs not liking to read. So this is, um, I remember saying this actually, ooh, back in I think 2001 when I gave a presentation, that we who work in parliamentary library and research services, we like to read. We wouldn't be doing this kind of work if we didn't like to read. But MPs are a different kind of people. And many of them are much more interested in talking and in listening. Is that true of your MPs? Hmm. So one of the challenges for us is that we need to deliver materials that ask them to talk and to listen rather than to read. So, I, and also the other thing that was very striking about this morning's presentations is how many of your parliaments have MPs with tablets with smartphones. But I bet you they are using those tablets and smartphones to look at YouTube, at video clips, at photographs. They find much more fun ways of getting their information on the whole than reading documents. So our challenge is to be there, is to, is to give them the kind of serious information they need to help them with the work that is in front of them as members of parliament, but in a way that is more engaging for them. So maybe we need to make video clips, or we not need to find video clips that are about the topics that we want them to understand more about. So if we could redefine what our job is, it is not to put in front of them necessarily written words, but to give them the information they need to support the decisions and the and the, and the discussions that they are having in our parliaments. So there's my challenge 
it is not straightforward for us because we are more comfortable with words than we are perhaps with pictures or with video clips. But it is that is the way we we uh, we will be more effective at addressing the audience that is the audience that we must talk to. So let me. Um, so now my co-presenter has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Um, I think we have we are out of time to to arrange how to make this work, but maybe we do. I do the this you bit, do that piece. and then we do you do the bit after that. Perfect. Um, so if I could have the first slide. So what I'm going to do here is this really go through the theory of planning, and for many of you this may be very familiar, but just to make sure that we all have this really clear. So when we are thinking about so many of you stood here and said, I'm here to learn, and I have some really specific things I want to learn about during this week. There is a challenge in front of us, and I want to learn from the experience of others how to, how to overcome this challenge. So I think there is, you are all here because you know that others are facing the same challenges that you are, and you are hoping that maybe there is someone who has overcome it that you can learn from. So we are wanting to move forward. When we want to, to move forward to do things differently, we need to think about what are our strategies for how we do that. We need to plan for how we, need, how we do it. We actually have to make those plans into re reality, deliver the new services, and then monitor and review how well those services are working. Really, you should have all these stages. But it is a cycle. So that the piece at the beginning is think and plan. Think and plan is really important, but it's also really important that you don't just think and plan, because if all you do is think and plan, you will have no new services for your members. So, the purpose of, the, of strategic planning. Oops. <laughs> Did take, uh, just slow. Um, you want to clarify the purpose and the objectives. This could be for your whole service. It could be for a project. So you can either do it at the big level or at the smaller level. And you may also be involved in exercises about planning for the whole of your parliament. So some of that, you start with clarifying purpose and objectives so that you have directions and priorities clear. You are looking at a broader-based, longer-term view so this is, is to try and step away from your day-to-day -day work. Think about the people that you serve and what the parliament is trying to accomplish. So that's the broader base. Your service within the goals of the parliament as a whole. Longer term is not just about the work that is in front of you, but where you are going. How is the parliament changing? How are MPs changing? Are you getting younger MPs in your parliament? Are they more, uh, more able to use technology? What kinds, what are they doing with these smartphones and tablets that they hold in their hands? You need to identify critical issues and constraints. And I think for almost everyone in this room, funding is one of your constraints. But you may have places that you can go to assist you with funding. You may have other critical issues, uh, often around technology, that you need to, to pay attention to and solve. So are you looking for a framework for the policy and the decisions that you make and to help you with your resource allocations and utilisation? So we are always short of funding. I do not think in any parliament around the world we can introduce a new service by asking entirely for new money. We are always having to find the money by reprioritising within the services that we currently provide. So are there things that you can stop doing in order to start doing some things that will inform and support your parliament more effectively? So the next picture is a picture of the planning cycle. <laughs> so this is just a reminder that, that it is cyclical that when you get to the end and you have reviewed and modified, then you go back to the beginning and start the planning again. So in most, in most organisations, the planning cycle is a yearly cycle. So you have a stage of thinking and planning and then implementing and then monitoring and measuring how well your changes have worked. So you would expect a pl an annual plan planning cycle 
for the library and research service as a whole, it might be a different cycle when you are talking about projects. If it's a big project, it might be more than one year. Smaller projects, maybe three months. So when you are thinking about strategies, Sorry. vision, vision first. <laughs> so set the vision and the direction for the library and information service. Um, I have got some examples of vision and direction for library and information services. One which is a reasonably common vision is a well-informed parliament. So that's uh, the vision for the whole of the library and research service, a well-informed parliament. Now that doesn't say that you are the ones that provide the information to the parliament, but it does say that you are encouraging an environment where the whole parliament is well informed. So it could be that you train the MPs how to do research on the internet better so that they are looking at better quality resources. It might be that you provide them with links to good material so that the time that they have available to do their own research is more focused and useful. So in your, in your vision, you are looking at the high level. What is it that you want to achieve? If you are doing a good job, what will be different about your parliament? So these are the questions that you need to ask at this stage when you are setting the vision. Where do we want to be? What kind of library services should we deliver to meet client needs? So this is where you are focusing on the parliament and the MPs and the committees. What do we want our clients to say about us? So try and keep it short. This is not a description of the library service. It is a description of what the library service will help the parliament to achieve. So the next area to think about is strategies. So what are the key strategies that will help you to deliver on the vision that you have defined? So the questions for this piece of the process are, <laughs> where are we now? Where do we want to be? And what do we need to do to close the gap? So I think as we listen to your presentations, many of you have that reasonably well articulated. You know where you are now. You know where you want to be. But maybe the piece about how to close the gap is not so clear for you. And that is some of why you are here, is to try and find, hear some ideas about how you close that gap. If you don't know where you are, it's very, if you think about a map and a a road map. You know where you want to go. If you don't know where you are, you won't know which direction you have to turn in. So you need both of those. You need to know where you are now and where you want to be in order to be able to work out what you have to do to get there. So in the plan, we turn now to something which is much, much more concrete. So you are looking at resources and priorities. So what do you need to do to actually deliver the change that is required? So at the time that you start the plan, you may not know all the answers. So some of what you will have to do as you are working through this is find the answers to some of the challenges in front of you. So in the planning stage, you are looking at what activities do we need to undertake? When do we need to have them done by? Who's going to do them? What money do we have to do it? What are the key dependencies? Are there things that you will need other people to do? And often in library and research services, this might be some IT developments that you need. What are the milestones in your project? When will those be delivered? And this is a really important area, this last one. What will be the governance? Who is in charge? Who are the stakeholders? And who makes the funding decisions? So one of the things that is often really increases the success for us is to include the people who make the funding decisions in the governance so that they have uh, ownership of, of the work that you are doing. So you don't involve them in all the detail, but you do involve them maybe on a steering committee or a, some kind of oversight that gives them understanding of what it is you're trying to achieve. So that's quite a lot of questions. It's an important part to actually work out the plan to sit down and work all of this out before you actually start to do it. I like to think of this as a setup phase where you're actually really defining what you're going to do and how you're going to do it in quite a lot of detail.
So then you get on to doing. Now this is a really important part because if you don't if you don't do it, if you don't actually implement your plan, then you haven't made any difference. So all the clever ideas and plans that you have in your head are not services that you are providing for MPs. It is only when you've actually done it, when you have implemented it, that you have improved the service provided to MPs and hopefully the outcomes of your, of your parliament. So this phase is really important. And this is probably where it moves. The previous stages are often done by the senior managers, and here, here you will be involving yourself. So really important to have a good team and to inspire and motivate that team. And then you want to leave them some room to actually do the work. So implement, implementation is a really important part of the project and usually will be the long part of the project. So you're... When you have a team who are delivering on a project, you do need to expect them to get on with delivering it, but you also need to pay attention to what they're doing. Everybody wants somebody to care about their work and to be interested in listening to how well it is going and whether it, you know, what are the things that are, are causing blockages. How can you help them to overcome those blockages? Because it may be that there needs to be a conversation you hold with another part of the parliament. Maybe you need more money. Maybe that you need to extend the time. It may be that uh, actually you need to get permission from somebody senior. And in most parliaments, uh, talking to somebody senior needs the, the senior manager from the research service. So then we get to review. No, monitor. Monitor. So this, this, is, this is again this, this period where you are uh, paying attention to what is going on. So you are, you are checking that activities are happening as you expected them to. You are checking that the, the budget that was allocated is, uh, is still a, a, an appropriate budget and that the outcomes that you expected to be delivered are in, in fact going to be delivered by the project. So you, you are paying attention to how well um, how well the actuality is matching your plan. So a plan is an idea that you start with and when you actually deliver it is almost and always there will be some differences. And hopefully the differences, often the differences are that you are delivering much more than you expected. That there are outcomes from your project that you didn't understand would be there at the beginning. But sometimes it will be that it is not working. And sometimes it is not working to such an extent that the right thing to do is to say, this pilot is not successful and we are stopping it. Stopping things in parliaments is really quite a difficult thing to do. But sometimes it is the right thing to do. So here you are looking at budget, at the delivery against the milestones, at the time frame. And particularly in a parliament, there are times when the time frame is really critical. So this, uh, in fact, the project I'm working on currently in Myanmar is one that is, happens in almost all parliaments. So we are preparing the materials, the documentation, to hand to the new MPs after the election. So, I mean, I, this, this kind of project happens in parliaments all around the world. The time frame is very fixed. The election will happen on the 8th of November, whether our member's handbook is ready or not. So it is very critical in this situation that we finish on time. So we have to keep measuring how we're doing against the time frame. We may have to reduce the quality that we are aiming at in order to get it done on time. But not getting it done on time, the MPs will arrive and if there is not documentation to handle them, hand to them, they will still go about the task of learning how to be MPs in the new parliament. So it is very, time frame is sometimes very critical in a parliament, but sometimes it is the delivery of milestones that is more important, and often budget is not something that we have much control over. We can't just say, we need to get this done faster, if you could give me twice as much budget, I could finish it in half the time. So in most of our parliaments, that's not reality for us. We're not going to get twice as much budget. So we are always looking for... Are we delivering the outcome that we expected? And is the amount of outcome that we're delivering still uh, a good proposition? Is it worth the amount of effort and of, of money that we are putting into our project? 
So monitoring is something that is going on right through the life of it. This is monitoring against uh, your service goals or monitoring against your project goals. When you come to review, so that's something that you are just doing constantly, maybe once a month, maybe once every two weeks, um, certainly once, once a quarter, looking at how progress is. But in review, this is a, a bigger stepping back, not just your ordinary monitoring, but a stand back and look at what was achieved. And so often um, this works if you include some people who have not been so intimately involved in the project or in the service delivery. Because to take a, an objective look at what you are achieving is quite hard if you have been intimately involved in delivery. So these, here are the questions that you ask are, what went well, and I would <coughs> always recommend starting with what went well. So you look at the good things first, and then what didn't go so well, and what can we learn from our mistakes. So uh, what can we learn from our mistakes is the most, is a, a positive approach to, you will make mistakes. And parliaments can sometimes be very risk averse. So they can be places where it's really hard to make mistakes. So when you are doing something new, you are, it's almost inevitable that there will be some mistakes. So what you want to try and uh, breed is a, a culture of learning from the mistakes, not expecting there to be no mistakes, but expecting that when there are things that don't go as well as you, as you wanted, that you learn from them and you work out how to, how to improve it next time. So then using the benefit of hindsight, and remember that the things that you can learn at the end of the project, you have learned because you have done the project, and it is not a bad thing that you didn't see them beforehand. We all have to learn by doing things. But sometimes, you know, events like this are really helpful because you can learn from somebody else's mistakes. Uh, so you have that advantage of being able to see what it will what you're, what you're wanting to do might look like before before you start. So, but sometimes you know it's always your own parliament, your own culture. What works in somebody else's parliament may not work in yours. So you try to work these things out. But the best way to work them out is to actually is to actually do the project and find out what's going on. But it's a really good idea to do the review at the end and to look at what would you do differently next time. So I think that is the end. So I have some, how many of you are more interested in uh, planning for the whole service and how many of you are more interested in, things, in planning for a project rather than the service as a whole? So who's more interested in the service as a whole? Put your hand up if you're interested in the ser your service as a whole. And those of you who are more interested in looking at planning for a specific project, put your hand up. Okay, so it's the more focus on the service as a whole. So um, we've got, I think we have 14 countries here. So now I want, uh, now the questions I'm going to ask are per country. So for each country, do you currently have a document? that is a strategic plan for your library and research service. Who has an actual document? Okay. Only one. Myanmar has one. <laughs> Egypt has one. I wrote it. <laughs> so, let's just hear a bit from those of you. So, Chama, can you just talk a little about your plan? Um, thank you. Um, as, as a library, I think I've talked about it several times. I think since Singapore, I made a presentation on what we do. And I think our strategic plan as a library came about because we felt we were being left out from the whole parliament strategic plan. So we, we had gone out on our own at, at the beginning and it was really difficult, but fortunately for us, um, there is a strategic plan for National Assembly of Zambia and all departments were taken for training, I think. Um, they decided it, 
needed um, all departments to come up with strategic plans for each um, area they are involved in. And we were told to come up with our strategic plans for from budgeting, planning, and where you'd like your department in the next couple of years. And it, it was a very good program when it started, and it was funded by um, parliamentary forms department who have partners like the UNDP, USAID, and other European Union partners. So it was very good. And right now, at the stage we're at, is the implementation stage. And as the library, we have put in our plan to be the information management service for the whole of Parliament. We have just started um, doing the DSpace um, digital library. What we decided initially, I think I found it interesting that you talked about what you had anticipated and what more that you found in your, um, in your implementation stage especially. When we, we thought of the digital library, at first we, we wanted to just um, make sure that our digitized documents were accessible, meaning that uh, all the parliamentary papers were accessible and um, other documents. But when we have started the uploading of um, the whole system, we went to each department. Each department has told us which documents they would like on the intranet. And um, so far, we had anticipated that we would only have the general parliamentary papers, which also the members of parliament would have access to. But we found that the documents that each department generates really, um, but generally speaking, the whole parliament service would benefit from. And we were initially surprised some departments we totally left out that they don't generate any documents that they would um, share with other members of staff and members of parliament, like security department. Obviously, security department is a very sensitive department. You're not, they're not going to share documents anyhow. But they, they told us they would like the document on... Um, just the general security things that we have to um, we have to be aware of as staff. So they have a they have a circular which they want under security department, and we were also surprised that committee department when we went to them, we said we would have our all the committee reports, the select as well as the general committee reports, and they have come up with a whole lot of documents they said they want in the system. Because they said that b previously they would have to look for a document, um, one of the desktops, one of the secretaries would have that document on, on their um, desktops. But now the DSpace general repository will be a digital library for the whole department. They won't have to depend on one person and it's on the internet, whether the internet is down or not, everybody will have access to the, depart to the department's documents and other staff as well. And another example I'd like to give of a department we thought we totally left out. We thought we don't need their documents on the um, digital um, DSpace um, repository was the accounts department. But when, when we went to the um, chief accountant, he said he would like to have the one specific form which is a document anyway, a specific form. When you travel, and everybody travels from all departments, they need to, re, um, they need to follow a process, um, retirement of everything. So that form is under accounts on our d digital um, library on the same. So nobody will be stranded. Like, you won't have to go to look for that document, upload it or find it wherever. On the internet, it will be available. So we we're looking at that, and we found that the um, the speaker's office is included as well. We engaged the executive assistant to the honourable Mr. Speaker, and he said he has a whole lot of documents, CPA, IPU documents that he's always asked if he wants to immediately get um, a hold of or where he can get them from. So that. This space project is proving to us to be more than we anticipated because we thought it was just our own digitized library documents. We thought we'd get a few more documents from other departments, but we are getting the whole information repository for the whole of Parliament. And I think up there, when they approved the project in December, 
they didn't think the magnitude was like that. They actually thought it was more technical. They thought it was just documents for the library. But now they found that it will be a digital library for the whole of Parliament. So we're excited. And I'm hoping, as you're saying, we, we review it in phases, and we will be able to tell what we need to do and where we, we go from here. But so far, this is where we're at. We're actually um, looking at the documentation for the whole of Parliament. Thank you. Thank you, Chama. <laughs> That's a, it's a great story um, and very much the kind of example that, uh, that I was talking about. If, you're, if your vision statement is something like the well-informed parliament, then this is exactly the kind of project that will deliver that because it is not, uh, it's not pro providing all the information through the library. It is providing a platform that allows the people right across the parliament to share their information that they want to share with others <coughs> and to access information from everyone else. So it is taking the skills that we use as librarians and making, turning them into information managers and working more widely to support the whole of the parliament. So it sounds like a fabulous project and well done and I'm sure you will have a great journey as you... <coughs> as you begin to work more widely across the parliament and to build different strategic partnerships from those that were the case when you were running a more traditional library service focused around books and journals. So it sounds really great. Is there anyone else who would like to share their experience? So you do not have to be where Sharma is, but I'm interested in a story of, uh, of planning, of thinking about how to improve Yes. Yes, um, Gavi John Bagonza. I'm the Director of Research Services in Parliament of Uganda. Um, we also have a strategic plan, but it's going to be integrated in the main plan of Parliament of Uganda. And uh, <coughs> the Department of Research Services was created in 2003, October. And uh, our, our idea was to, because we were a new department, we thought we could have a new beginning. And uh, we set out to make a strategic plan for five years. And the basis was that because we still have many challenges, we'll, we are, as a new department, we have new staff, they will need capacity. We had challenges of uh, collaboration. We thought we should have a way of defining how we'll be collaborating with other institutions related to research and other parliaments. So we sat down as a department, formed the team, and that a team was of five people. We draw out our, our documents. One of the issues was of uh, the way we would resource the department, uh, because we had some, some gaps. The other issue was how we would work the systems, because being a new department, we had to look at uh, the policies, the guidelines. So we sat down and looked at that also. Then the other issue was to look at our the training, the way we would build the capacity of the, the some nine new researchers. Then the other area was on how we would look at uh, uh, how we should collaborate with other research institutions and access information. Uh, the document was developed, uh, the Board of Manage Management have approved it, and we are now at a stage of integrating it in the main plan, and uh, that will happen, I think, this year or early next year. Thank you. There's a couple of really good examples. Are you willing to share your plans with others if they, are, if they ask you? Yes. Sharma? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. It, is always, uh, it is always helpful to read someone else's plan, but it is the process of coming up with a plan that is really important. It is not the document. It is the, the thinking and the working out what is right for your parliament to do it. Um, I just wanted to check how many of your parliaments so this is a question once again for each uh, delegation. Uh, have any kind of assistance project that is, that is helping with the development? How many parliaments have assistance projects? Like a USA? Uh, UNDP, USA, UNDP, IPU. IPU, these kinds of projects. Some of you told us about them. So. Hands up if, you've, if, you have, if you have one or you have had one in the past. So how many countries? 
Myanmar, 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 Myanmar. <laughs> Egypt. So can I? So hands up high as I can see. Okay. So it's not so many actually, but I can tell you if you have an assistance partner, a development partner working with your parliament, they will be very interested in a plan, because the development partners are not necessarily the funders. They may be the people who are working with you to deliver the assistance, but they may be getting funding from somewhere else, and they will not be able to help to get the funding unless they have a plan. So if you are, if you are interested in trying to find a development partner, then um, the process of planning will be really critical. So you have to have a statement of where you are now and where you want to be in order to be able to attract, uh, to, to find a development partner. You have to have clear goals within your own parliament about what you are trying to achieve. Is there anyone else who would like to share a story? They do not need to be, um, these are, you know, the two stories we have heard are very, are very inspiring stories of, of good planning. They don't have to be at that level. Egypt? You can tell us about it, you know, because... I think the IPU helps uh, our parliament and um, uh, they uh, put uh, the uh, they put the plan the strategic uh, plan for us and now we are in the stage of implement um, we have many courses and many training courses in uh, Egypt uh, these days from about uh, four months we uh, have started this uh, stage um, but we still um, we know w w where we are and what we want to be but the gap is still uh, too large <laughs> and we try to uh, to help ourselves and to help our colleagues to to make it narrow but um, um, the, the 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 partner that we ha the IPU, um, I think uh, the problem of uh, security, what we share, what not share, and the resources, the digital resources in Arab world is still uh, not like um, uh, Europe uh, publications or uh, in uh, USA. We still have they adhere to the paper and to the documents uh, to read it, even the newspaper. If the MP wants uh, an article, when we give it in an uh, electronic form, uh, he, uh, he says, no, uh, I, I like to have it in a paper. So it's a culture. We are fighting this culture, but I think we, we, we need to move with the MPs themselves, not, not the librarian, not the to put a plan for uh, for us, not for the MPs. So we need the the way to uh, to to walk in this way together. And uh, I think this um, we we um, the IPU uh, helps us now, but and before the ARG from uh, US aid. Uh, there were, uh, they were uh, our partner uh, from 10 years, I think, and now the IPU. That's, thank you. Thank you for that, Heba. I think um, Heba has talked about two, two things, and one has just gone out of my brain, um, but the first one was language. And I think this is an issue for many of you as well. And the issue is about whether the resources are available in the language that your MPs use. So I think for, and I can say to you actually, even from New Zealand where English is our native language, we had the same issue. It was not so much, the documents were available in languages that our MPs could read, but they were not about New Zealand. So there's two things for you. It is language and also relevance. So we are always, the most important resources for us are the resources about our own country. 
Then the second thing that we need is resources that compare our country with our neighbours and with the countries that, that our country is compared with. So in Myanmar, they have described it as uh, they are interested in ASEAN and in successful countries. So the countries that they consider to be the ones that they are trying to become more like. So I think for every parliament, that would be the same. You are most interested in resources about your own country and then resources that compare your country with your neighbours and with other successful countries. So for many of you, this is a big challenge. And it's particularly so as in Egypt and for Myanmar where the, where the font that is used is not uh, an English font as well. So you're not just talking about language difficulties, language barriers, but also some more technical difficulties relating to the, the font that is used. So that can restrict some of the software that is accessible for you. It may mean that you, are, you need to learn more about uh, particularly English than you would expect just to be able to actually use the software that's accessible. Now there was something else you said just, you talked about language and you talked about something else on that side. Working thing. together. Working together, yes. I really wanted to, um, to uh, talk about that a bit because, um, so I went to Egypt and uh, helped with the IPU assessment there and the person I was working alongside of was the ICT person doing the ICT assessment. So in your presentations this morning, many of you spoke about how closely library and research were connected. So in some parliaments they are, are completely working together, integrated. In some parliaments they are separate. How many of you uh, are in the same section as IT? So I know Namibia is. <laughs> So, actually, why don't you just talk to us about the rationale for your section and why you have the things that you have together. I think Namibia is currently running the, um, the library and the computer services together. I'm heading that department. Now, the whole idea, I think, was that um, because library itself is moving into digital, and also, it's, if you look at library, really, uh, it doesn't have a, 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 a higher composition of, of, uh, of personnel. And, I, and you've got the IT department as well, with, the, with also a smaller composition of personnel. So what we thought is that uh, because the, the main idea of the whole um, library um, uh, section is to go digital and to and look into how can we use uh, technology into enhancing uh, uh, access to information. So we thought maybe we could actually mesh them and put them together. And uh, mostly that was the main rationale. And uh, I think you mentioned something very important that, uh, uh, that uh, it seems like uh, in many times we, we focus on, serv on serving the NPs as opposed to serving the parliament itself. And that's actually very true because if you look into some strategic plans, because okay, currently we don't have one, we are in the process of developing one, but uh, even in my mind, my, fo my focus was looking at, uh, at the NPs as opposed to the parliament, and that's, I think it's a very important thing to, to uh, uh, recognize when you do your planning that uh, you're really planning for the, uh, for the parliament itself as opposed to planning for just the NP, because the NP is actually members of the parliament, and, the, and within the parliament you have different stuff, and I mean different uh, composition as well, and the whole idea of uh, of access to information, it's not just for the NPs, it's for the members of public as well, because they want to know and uh, hold the NPs accountable of, uh, of, um, of what they're doing in the, um, in the parliament. Because like it, it was told before, we're running this um, bicameral system, we have uh, two, two houses, and uh, we, we're running a common service, which means that uh, the computer services and library department is, is taking care of both houses, they, both National Assembly and National Council. So we try to put that together. Okay. 
Thank you. That was another very good intervention. So we are starting to hear you talking so much more strongly about the institutions that we serve, the parliament, and also this that it's not just about thinking about the parliament but about your country and the fact that the parliament serves the country. So these are so the need to work together, to work with other partners in the parliament to actually produce the outcomes that we are looking for that will improve the service that the Parliament provides to our countries. This is a very good theme to be coming through. So actually Neil is now here and uh, here we have enough time to have his presentation before lunch, which I think is a better way to organise us. And then after lunch, which is always the time when everyone feels a bit sleepy, <laughs> we will have you talking to each other. So over to Neil. Uh, Moira, <clears throat> thank you very much, and I think Moira's introduction, we swapped it around, was a very good introduction to what I'm going to be talking about. So once again, Moira, thank you for a very informative talk. You are an accomplished speaker, and I think everybody owes you a round of applause. Thank you. I'm Neil Nell. I'm the head of the uh, Division in Parliament for Knowledge Management, Knowledge and Information Services. That includes the library, the research, all the languages, and remember we've got 11 languages plus sign language, um, library research, yeah, uh, and the research library and, and language services. The title of my talk is Strategic Planning in Parliament. I can see it on the screen in front of me, so if you're wondering why I look here, that's the screen in front of me. It's, um, and I speak loudly so I can walk around. But what I'm actually going to be talking about is the gap. Why no, the no, gap? No, no, no. It's just we got interrupted. Yeah. So you know. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I can't walk around. Okay. <laughs> Why the gap? Because very often we learn the theory. We get told the theory. The theory gets explained to us. It's on paper. It's electronic. And then we get to our world, the real world, and we are faced with a myriad problems. But what you need to understand is the problems that you face are not owned to you. We've all faced these problems. And so what I want to talk about today are some of the issues that we in the Parliament of South Africa have faced to achieve our strategic plan. And we have a strategic plan for the fifth Parliament, which started in 2014 and will end in 2019. That strategic plan is then cascaded down. Um, I think don't worry about the, the, the talk. Uh, I'm going to talk ad lib. I, I get lost with these things on the board. Um, we've cascaded that down to the various divisions, sections, units. And I want to start with the strategic plan of Parliament. And what are the imperatives for a successful plan. What is important to achieve a successful plan? And these you won't find in the theory books. Number one, in my mind, is speak the same terminology, same language. Too often I've heard of strategic objectives, outcomes, key performance indicators, indicators, fundamental indicators, outputs, impacts, and afterwards nobody understands what on earth we are talking about. <laughs> and so before you go into a planning session, make sure that you have a glossary of terminology and it is understandable. In our case, the Ministry of Finance, or what we call Treasury, has in actual fact brought out such a key. So that in South Africa we are talking the same language when it comes to planning. And the language we talk is impact. In other words, what impact does Parliament have on the people of South Africa, on the people of the region, and possibly wider than that? What outputs do we have to achieve to get that impact? What inputs have to go into that? And what activities have to feed into this? And then, of course, there's finance. So, number one, we have decided on a standard terminology. 
And as I say, you will not find that in any books on theory of, of, of um, strategy, but it is critically important. Because too many arguments I've heard about objective and output, and they're talking exactly the same language, but they're using two different terms and we're coming from two different sides. Number two. Oh, and strategy and business plan and long-term strategy. And what's another one? Roadmap. A roadmap, that's right. Decide on the words that you're going to use, please. <laughs> and if you have a very strong secretary or the deputy chair or the deputy speaker is leading this, try and have a meeting with that person before the time and say, look, these are issues, let's face them. Okay, number two. Your strategic plan, roadmap, whatever you want to call it, is not a document that you work one week in the beginning of the year and then file it. What have you done that week? You've simply wasted your time. The strategic plan of your parliament is that which has to be used to direct the work of the rest of parliament for the rest of the year and the coming years. In our case, we have followed the African vision of trying to look at a long-term strategy, and our strategy is 15 years. We are nowhere near that which Africa is looking at, and we're nowhere near that which the Chinese are looking at. But we are looking at 15 years. Number three. Your strategy is not cast in stone. It is a working document. It is an intent. If things have to change, change the plan. Too many times I've heard this, I want to call it nonsense. Oh, we can't change now. We have to do it in 12 months' time when we do our strategic planning. If it's necessary to change, change it now. Call the meetings, get everybody involved, and do the amendments to the plan. So number one, talk the same language. Number two. It is not a document that you file. It's a working document. Number three, if it is necessary to change it, change it. Number four. We also have this argument in our parliament. Is it bottom up or top down or somewhere in between in the middle? This is parliament. This is the POs and the speaker and the politicians telling us exactly what has to happen in the country, and it is for us to implement that. This is the way we do it in South African Parliament. It is not for the administration to tell the politicians what they need to do. And so in our Parliament, the politicians get together, or what we call the presiding officers, and they design a strategic intent. Those five issues which we have to achieve in the long term, and in our case, number one, we have to write good legislation. Number two, we have to involve the public in everything we do. Because in our case, there have been court cases where the law has been questioned because there was not enough participation by the public. Number three, we have to take cognizance of the international environment. We cannot make laws in isolation. We have to know what's going on in our neighbors, further afield, and in the world. Number four, and this is one of those that is coming in now, we have to look at the budgetary process in South Africa, and so we have, like many of you, have got a budgetary office, and that budgetary office has to become active. And number five, which I'm not sure... Um, there is a similar uh, objective in, in other parliaments, but we have one that says we have to foster cooperative government. Now, what does that mean? Cooperative government is the government ruled at the national level by the executive, through the provincial, through the municipal, right down to the nth level at the lowest level, and all these have to work in unison. Too often, too often, we have found delegations going on oversight from the same parliament meeting at a place on two different aspects of the oversight and the one saying to the other, oh, we didn't know you were coming. 
I mean, it, it, it's, we laugh about it and we're a family here, but this is true. It cannot happen. And so we have an objective that says there has to be cooperative government. We have to work right through the spheres of government. And that's very important. Remember, South Africa has two houses. It's not a lower house and a, high, a, a, house and a lower house. We have the National Assembly and we have the an, an, um, NCOP, National Council of Provinces. And these have equal standing. So, get your terminology right. Number two, it is not a static document. Number three, change is possible. Number four, get the strategic statement from the presiding officers, from the political uh, heads within Parliament. Number five, and I think here is one which is not done properly anywhere is once the strategic plan has been written and organized, it is up to us, and I think us is the operative word, it is up to us to make sure that everybody in our organization understands and believes this document. We have to disseminate that information so that everybody is part of this strategic plan. There is a lovely story which we all learn in management was when the late President Kennedy in the United States was touring Cape Canaveral. And he walked around and there was a man sweeping the floor. And he said to the man, what are you doing here? And the man said, Mr. President, I'm putting a man on the moon. In other words, the guy sweeping the floor knew exactly what was the purpose of keeping that place clean? And to keep it clean was to assist in putting a man on the moon. And so the, they understood their strategy. They had buy into the strategy. And then the last aspect is, once the strategy for the parliament has been written, accepted, it is then up to us, and again us, to take the strategy and create the environment that will allow us to achieve that. Because this is where the work is done. This is where the activities take place. And so your strategic intent comes from the top, but the activities and the work come from the bottom. And if we get this right, then the impact that we have on the people of our countries will be felt and the parliaments will be relevant. I'm not for one minute saying parliaments are not relevant. But I am saying I think there's a lot more we can do and we need to do to make it happen. And so my talk was entitled, Filling the Gap. Now let's carry on. The strategic document is not a document in isolation. How do we make this happen? Well, number one, we have to attach to this document, your strategic document, your risk analysis. What are your risks involved in each of those items in the plan? Will you achieve them? Will you not achieve them? Why will you not achieve them? What is the risk? What is the impact? And I'm not going to give a lecture on risk analysis here, but it is very well documented. It is important to attach a risk register, we call it a risk register, to the strategic plan. The third document you have to attach to your strategic plan is your actual implementation plans from each section and unit. In other words, the activities have to be attached to this. So that everybody, anybody reading this can see, oh, this is the strategic intent, this is what you want to achieve, and this is how you are going to achieve it. And these are the risks. When, when a speaker drinks water, they're thinking for a minute. So. <laughs> and then the next document, and this is probably the most important document, but it's the one we, we all detest. We want to achieve what is in the strategic plan. The activities have to speak to that achievement. But who drives the activities? It is the personnel. The people who work in Parliament have to drive those activities. 
And so this document, what is contained in this document, must be contained in their performance contracts. Otherwise it's of no value. So if the performance contract says, or if the strategic plan says, we need to have um, dissemination of newspaper information every morning. Somebody has to disseminate newspaper information every morning. And Miss X or Mr. Y, it is their responsibility. And it should appear in their performance contract mm -hmm. that by 9 o'clock every morning, this has to be accomplished. And so, filling the gaps. On a global view, you've got your strategic plan. You've got your risk register. You've got your individual plans from the various sections and units. And you have your performance management, which makes this happen. And the last, which is not a document that you are responsible for, but you are co-responsible for, it is generally the Auditor General who is responsible for that, is at the end of the year to monitor whether you have achieved this. And I'm happy to say, and I am going to shine and polish the marble just a little bit, that Parliament, South African Parliament, for the last six, seven years, has received a clean audit. Absolutely clean. And I think it goes because we, we, we have a conscience and, and, and a conscious effort to look at our strategic plan and draw it right down to the activities and the personnel within Parliament. It doesn't always work and it's not always easy. But we are achieving that. Now let's look at that which applies to us. The library and research. In the Parliament of South Africa we have, as I say, the Division of Knowledge and Information Services. Under that we have library, research and all the language services, which is interpreting, translating uh, and the um, uh, Hansard reporting. Within the strategic plan in Parliament for each of those sections or units, we have then put and that is the job of the, of the division manager as well as the unit managers, we have decided what is that which is important to us which will help us achieve the objectives of Parliament or the outcomes of Parliament. And in the case of the library, it's not unlike yours. We have gone the route of digitization. We have gone the route of informing the public. In other words, the public must become part of our library. To me, it was so fantastic a few years ago in Helsinki to see the Library of Parliament open on Saturday and Sunday and the public use it as a public library. And I looked at this and I shook my head and I said to Albert, this is impossible. It will never happen. And then I started thinking about it and then I thought, you know, it has to happen. It's not a question of never happening, it's when is it going to happen. Now, our situation is slightly different. You've probably visited Parliament, uh, Parliament Library. It's a very beautiful library, but due respect, Albert, it, it, it's useless as a library goes because it's a tall building that goes straight up and you don't have access to the books. Only the assistants in the library have access to the books. So you can't go in and browse the book. You have to use the electronic catalogs. But in a strange way, that makes it very easy for us. Because we can open our library almost instantaneously through the electronic media. We don't have to have hundreds of people coming into the library. And so this is one of the plans that we have got on the ground, is to open the library to public access. And that's in the strategic plan, and a project has been written for that. So that just demonstrates how this plan has been pulled right down through to the library. Research. How has it affected research? Well... In our strategic plan of Parliament, one of the issues was an increase in the efficiency of the supply of information and documentation. Whether it comes from legal services, whether it comes from research, whether it comes from documentation. Oh, that's the one I forgot. Documentation is also part of the division. It is to make sure that documents arrive on the desk of a politician either in electronic form or in paper form, within the allocated time frame. Whether it's 24 hours, 36 hours a month, it has to be there on that day. No exceptions, 100%. And so research was that research papers, when they are ordered, 
must arrive on the desk of the politician within the allocated time. Exactly the same with language services. We have to provide 11 languages with every interpretation service we offer, every house sitting. And we have not always achieved that. But from now on, that has to be achieved. And so the strategic plan has been taken right down to the units. I wanted to say something now. And exactly the same with the Hansard and reporting. Hansard must be delivered within 24 hours. The unrevived Hansard must be delivered within 24 hours of the sitting. And we have even taken that to, it has to be available by 10 o'clock on the morning after the sitting. And it is possible. It is possible. Let me come down to the question of 100%. In strategic plans of the past, we have said, oh, we have to deliver services at 80% or 95%. But we've been talking about this, and the management has, been, has decided that the Parliament of South Africa is not paying for 15% failure or for 3% failure or for 2% failure. And so all services are set at 100%. In other words, papers delivered on time, 100%. In the case of Mr. Ntunja, information delivered from the library, 100%. If you do not achieve that 100%, you have to give reasons why it is not achievable. Then we can put that in the risk register and start looking at how we're going to achieve this. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I entitled my talk, The Gap. And I looked at some of those issues which we have faced. And how are we facing them? And what I've hoped, yeah. And what I hope is that you realize that we all face problems. Some are different. Some have a co totally different context. Uh, the language issue in computers. Uh, where the language in which you communicate the written form is not that which is standard uh, on the computers that you buy. I can imagine that those must be really, really difficult problems. But we all have problems. We all have to face the constraints. And if we communicate with each other and, and ask the questions, we will be able to find solutions to these issues. It has been a pleasure speaking with you. I will see you at the reception tomorrow night. Uh, and I do hope that you find the rest of the day and tomorrow fruitful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Um, we have had the privilege. When IPU is looking for a parliament to to assist other parliaments uh, who is very expert in strategic planning, the place that IPU turns to for preference is South Africa. So it's been a great privilege to hear the, one of the parliaments that has the best strategic planning process of the parliaments of the world share their experience with us this morning. So I think um, some of what you are talking about will be unfamiliar to <laughs> participants in this room because in some of our parliaments our planning process is not quite so sophisticated. So it's thank you for sharing um, your experience with us. So we will, it is time for lunch now. Albert is, just let me, I have one more. And we, when we come back after lunch, we will have a practical exercise where you will talk with each other and start to process some of the more theoretical material we have shared with you this morning and uh, think about how it might apply in your own situations. So. Albert? Few announcements. The papers that are being presented will be available on a USB drive at the end of the, not of the training, but of the pre conference. You will receive a USB drive with all the papers. So don't worry making uh, copies or 
Yeah. The other thing is the lunch is only one hour. We'll have to be back immediately after that. And uh, the good news, the IT technician has found the problem and will be working on the laptops during your lunch time. Thank you. Anybody would like to have a, 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 a short discussion, probably a group discussion about planning, you're most welcome. Lunch is ready at the f f on the first floor on the of this building on the ground floor of this building. The staff outside will help you to get to the dining hall. <laughs>